everyone. How are you today? While they get the slides up and ready, I thought, oh, there it is. They're very fast. Thank you, gentlemen. I'm going to share with you three things. Oh, backwards a slide. Stole my headline here. Um, I'm going to share with you three strategies for grounding and connecting people through authentic design. But I wanted to say this is maybe an easier thing for you to remember and to take home. So design is a superpower. And design is my superpower. So I'm Tama Duffy Day, and I lead the global practice of senior living for Gensler. And in addition to that Buell and book we have, we like to say Gensler designs everything from a wine label to one of the tallest buildings in China. And we are the world's largest design firm. And we love to think and say, and we're bold enough to say, we believe you can create a better world through the power of design. And we think you can too. So I'm going to ask that you think about design as your own superpower as we go through this. So one of the first strategies is designing from the inside out. So if you think about this, it's about people, right? The empathy of how we design for people in the spaces we design. And I'm going to share a couple examples. About seven years ago, we began working in Chicago on an affordable housing for the first of its kind LGBTQ seniors. And since we had no precedent for that, we really wanted to understand and hear from the elders of what mattered to them in this facility. And they shared with us really remarkable information about inclusivity, about the importance of activism, and about how they build community with their family. And their family maybe looks and is shaped slightly differently. And we led them through a series of workshops to really truly understand. And that little picture, or bigger picture here behind me, is one of the workshops where we were helping to share ideas of size and shape and form. You know, so we taped full scale on the floor. The blue lines are the walls and the door and the door swing and how big the furniture is. Because people have a really hard time understanding square footage, to say the least. And of course, in architecture, that's a tool we use for everything we do. And what we learned in this was really remarkable because they were helping us to shape the building and they decided to give more space to amenities and community space and to downsize their apartments into studio units because they felt that that would be the best use of the square footage we had understanding space. And so remarkably, of course, that changed the shape of the building and its form. So both of these buildings are the town hall apartments, which we named in that workshop and as you can imagine, the size and shape of the windows were all driven by the single units and the studio units. So it shaped and formed the pattern of the windows. And the amenity space are in the historic preservation of the police station. So sit with that for a minute. LGBTQ activism and that police station is now a part of this project. Really remarkable. It was leased, rented before they even took a shovel in the ground and there's a waiting list, designing from the inside out. And we created a terrace for them. And in, you know, every other day of the year, except for the gay pride parade, the terrace is used for gardening and spending time outside. But now, being the elders, they still participate in the gay pride parade by being up there, illustrating their activism in the support. The second example is with Citizen M Hotel brand. This recently opened in Seattle, and they have a very specific guest. So they are catering for a guest that wants to live in community. And that guest actually wants to be in this space because of the specifics of how the hotel is designed. And it's designed around the hotel room. There's one size hotel room around the globe. In every single hotel of Citizen M, it's about the size of a king-size bed, seven feet. Just a little bit wider than me. And it is designed like a Swiss army knife. And there is nothing in that room you don't need. And that is all built, fabricated, furnished, finished, off-site in a construction module. And we build it almost like Lego toys, Lego blocks. And of course, that impacts the building's shape and form. And their public spaces are open 24-7. You can get food and beverage 24-7. And they believe that they are colorful, confident, and artsy. They even have their own scent. 
<laughs> and they believe in art so much that before they open a property, they have an art exhibit. They bring in a local artist. And this is illustrating and celebrating the diversity of the people they serve, their guests, their staff, and the community in which they live. The second strategy is to design memorable experiences. And the Genzer Research Institute created an experience design framework that puts the intention of the person at the center of this framework. And around it, we group three things. We design the expectation of that user. We design the interaction with that user. And then we design the physical space. And those three things, when thoughtfully put together, design memorable experiences. And I'll share a couple. Like the Central Park House in Vancouver. It is steps away from the park, the biggest park in Vancouver. And of course, it's meant to have incredible views. So it's both grounded and elevated. And at the middle of the property is the Horizon Pavilion. And in the Horizon Pavilion are all the amenity spaces, the two-story amenity space. And it's cantilevered off the building, so it creates incredible views, somewhat of an urban oasis. And it is the most memorable element of the building itself. And the entry space is a two-story lobby, kind of welcoming you home, kind of sheltering you from the chaos of an urban living, meant to be grounded meant to be in an urban setting. Another example is the project that we're delivering in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Again, another high rise, 22 stories high. It will be the largest building in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. But this is 55 plus independent living in an urban setting, designed specifically to engage older adults in an urban setting, and the importance urban adults have in building urban communities. It's also intended to be an economic development fund in, in the urban Lancaster to really drive economic development in the southern portion of that city. The two-story base is really designed like a hotel. So the podium is all the residences. In the two-story base below, there's a two-level, two-story arrival like a hotel. There's a ballroom, a restaurant, a spa, a fitness center. And it's really looking at designing memorable experiences. And all of the public spaces, people are welcomed in. There's no gate. So it's really about designing an intergenerational experience and using the history of that city to help brand and develop the elements in it. So we are creating the naming and the branding and the logos and the menus for all of the spaces and the public spaces in this uh, b incredible building. Lancaster used to be called the Red Rose City, and the roses are meant to build community. So it will be the Red Rose Ballroom. And then the site we're on used to be a printing press. So it's called Inkwell to really reminisce again about the site. And this project was designed by experts from Genzer in brand, in hospitality, in residential, in senior living, and in healthcare, all together because all of that knowledge went into the strategy of this. And the third component is really about designing for health. And we know from evidence-based design that nature is a really important aspect of our own health and well-being. And my entire career has really been focused on health and wellness. And so I think that's an important aspect. And in many of our healthcare projects, you know, we're lucky enough, and this is in you know, Ohio Health, the Neuroscience Wellness Center. It's a bucolic site. And the building literally sits in nature. And so it acts as a beacon, if you will, to find your way. But we know that being in nature reduces your stress, and it can reduce your blood pressure. So you can imagine the power of this building in nature. And the interior of the building is really sky lit and filled with sunlight. And the center of the building has an atrium for staff, because staff respite and staff well-being is an important part of retention and an important part of how staff give back to the people in which they serve. In Ohio, for those of you from Ohio, I know there's someone here from Ohio. Um, there's snow there. And so to allow people to have a walking track in all four seasons, we widen the corridors just a little bit so that between the geriatric clinic and the therapy spaces, you actually have a walking path. But it's possible to bring nature in in an urban setting as well. 
So in designing the Shirley Ryan rehab facility, this is on the seventh floor, so you arrive at the seventh floor, and connected with the arrival zone is the garden, and really a path for, again, urban elements and how you can engage nature in that as well. And the Shirley Ryan Ability Lab wants to revolutionize rehab. And so there is no sterile white interior for this. Rather, it's filled with color and joy and positive distraction, both for the patients, the scientists, and for the, and the residents. In times, you don't have access to nature, but you can use biophilia. And with biophilia, you bring elements of nature into the spaces you design. So the patterning, the wood, the subtle elements, the shape, the form, all reminisces of the elements that you get in nature walking through a forest. This happens to be the center for healing. And we are testing psilocybin to reduce stress and depression in late stage cancer patients. So aligning the mindset and the set and the setting of the physical space is an important aspect for that to be successful. But it's not just in places of healing. So how many of you flew through SFO by any chance? So healing also comes into all of the practices that we work, even aviation. We've been working with SFO for over 40 years and renovated this terminal too. And in it, we brought in more natural daylight, we brought in more organic and whole foods that were locally sourced, and water. We know hydration is important when you're traveling. You need to stay hydrated. So we brought water more accessible to everyone that's traveling. And this is the first yoga room in, a, in an airport in North America. And my husband and I traveled and we were like, wait, it's right there. And we went in and opened the door of the yoga room and two people were there stretching, doing exercises, again, being healthy in their community and in their travel. So I'll end. As you can see, I think design is a really powerful tool and it can do anything, anything. So here's some fun examples and I'll go through these really quickly. So it can be a big, hairy, audacious idea, like a concept. When they're renovating the parliament, what if we did a floating building and we moved people in there while there was a renovation? Didn't move forward, but it was a great idea. But design can also be about micro elements. You know, designing a bathroom that's safe, accessible, and easy to clean takes a lot of details, from the height of the toilet to how to engineer that drain so the floor doesn't flood. So it is micro and macro. And design can be something as simple as really outfitting three spaces in slightly different way, from a closet to an office, which we all use through the pandemic, to a sleeping space. Um, in Washington, D.C., the fatality rate for infant and mothers in the black community is two times higher than the national average. And we just opened this birth center in Washington, D.C. So design can focus on safety, and it can be a beautiful place to celebrate birth. And when we were working with Hyundai and really understanding this space, which is an assembly space where they have meetings and parties and events like this, they wanted this space to represent their belief of their brand. So really, technology, lighting, acoustics, and the intent of this space is to really blur the line between art and architecture. But design can be funny, right? It can make you laugh. It can be humorous. At AT&T Discovery Space in Dallas, it's a place that adults can play. Remember when you used to play and move around and have, bring joy? So design can bring joy and color into the spaces we design. And I also believe design is not just for the wealthy. So I've been involved in federally qualified health centers my entire career, and with a little bit of paint and maybe a pattern on the floor and the color of the upholstery, you can bring joy and life to federally qualified health centers and for patients to really su and support their health and their well-being. And we know that design can actually improve your score as a child in studying. So this is the playmaker space, and the intent of this is to actually have children be engaged in a playful experiment that is immersive for STEM. Design can frame a view. It can entice shoppers back into a retail setting. 
It can bring the outside in and the inside out. And we were working with the Grand Hyatt. The site was located between the airport and the Pacific Ocean. And so there's this idea of wrapping together wind and waves and looking at the yin and the yang of the space and marveling at construction because it takes teams to do this kind of work. It isn't just an idea. The detailing of all of that is critically important. And design can frame a celebratory meal. And design can shape an entire city. So we know that in China, it has the largest population of 65-year-olds. 11% of their population is over 65. And this is a prototype city engaging in nature and scale and bringing park-like elements into cities. And it's a city designed for longevity. So I believe design, I know design is my superpower. And I believe everyone in this room has an opportunity for design to be your superpower. And I leave you with that. Thank you very much.